Hey guys, this is my Ames 10,000 watt split phase inverter. Today I'm going to take a look at how I can control this using my Batrium BMS, or any BMS really for that matter. Now Batrium does support controlling a wide range of inverters out of the box, however that requires uh, use of the CAN protocol or controller area network. While many of these middle grade inverters do have an RJ45 communications port as you see here, they are typically proprietary or you know something like RS-232 and don't actually support the CAN protocol. Now there are two main reasons why I want to do this. I don't get a lot of sun during the winter. I'll be fortunate to see anywhere from you know 12 to 13 kilowatt hours on a bright and sunny day. And then when it snows and the panels are covered, you know I won't see anything for anywhere from several days to a week straight. I mostly stay on grid from mid-November until about February, switching back to the batteries when I can once they've you know recharged and there's power available to be used. This inverter consumes quite a bit of power while it sits here idling, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense to leave it running if there's no loads or anything like that being run. Now, I know people are going to immediately jump in on this claim and say, oh, they're a high-frequency inverter, doesn't use much power, yada yada, uh, but that's a whole separate discussion for another day. And the second reason is I want my Batrium BMS to be able to shut down this inverter without entering the critical state, tripping my shunt trip breakers, disabling chargers, and requiring me to come out here and manually reset it each time. The critical state should be reserved for just that when a critical problem occurs that requires a complete system shutdown. Alright, so now I emailed uh, Ames Technical Support and they very quickly provided me this pinout diagram of the RJ45 port on the front of the inverter. In addition to the protocol information, and I will leave a link to where you can find all that in the description of this video. But for the purposes of this video, uh, we want to look at pin number 3, which is power on. And then we also have an option for pin number 7, which is the power save mode. I don't use the power save mode, but it is available if you would like to. So what we need to do is connect pins 3 to pin number 5. Pin number 5 is labeled SW2BATV, which provides a system level battery voltage. So I picked up a standard Ethernet cable on Amazon. This is a Category 6 twisted pair 24 gauge stranded conductor cable. And I have the pinout and color listing for a standard Ethernet patch cable. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that these colors match the cable that I ordered. So I know it's going to be difficult to see on the camera, but it does match. All the colors are there and they are in the correct order, which is great. Uh, so next I will cut off one of the ends because I only need the end that plugs into the inverter. So I now have four pair of wires exposed and this little plastic center thing that you'll find on Category 6 cables. You can just cut that off. All right, so I got my little diagram here. I need pins number three and five. So I need the green stripe and the blue stripe. So here I got green stripe and here is the blue stripe. All right, so there's the two wires stripped. Now I don't want to assume these are the correct wires because when you're buying cables like this, you never know how uh, the company wired it and if the wires are and if the wires are actually in the correct pins. So what I'm going to do is plug this into the side. And with my multimeter, I should see battery level voltage on pin number five. And pin number five is the blue stripe. So I've got the negative lead going up to the circuit breaker on the negative side. And if I touch the negative lead, I have 53.4 volts. So with that reading, I know pin number five is actually pin number five as indicated on this pinout here. So I should be able to disconnect these two wires and see this inverter turn on. So we'll do that now and hopefully this thing does not blow up. Okay. And it has powered on successfully. So we'll go ahead and disconnect that for now. And I want to unplug it from the inverter because I don't want to be messing around with these wires live like this. Alright, so on my Batrium over here I want to use relay number one. And these are normal open relays, so you have a common and then you have a closed position. So that goes to pins 11 and 12 here on the left. So I'm going to remove this little pin header block. Now I don't want to just insert these wires directly into this pin block because you risk, uh, you know, damaging these wires and whatnot. So as with anything like this, I'm going to crimp on some of these ferrules. And the way this works, if you haven't used these ferrules before, is you just slide it over your wire like so. And you want to make sure that insulation goes through the yellow piece and that the wire starts, you know, where the silver piece is here. And then I just have this little ratcheting crimp tool to crimp it down. So we'll insert it. So. And here you can see the crimped connection. It's got, what, three or four crimps there. Uh, so I'll just trim off the little bit of copper sticking out the end. All right, so there's our two crimped ferrules. And I did trim down some of these wires just a little bit here so I don't have a lot of extra flapping around. So now I can go ahead and insert these into pins 11 and 12. 
and tighten down the screws. All right, so I plugged it back into the bait room here, double checked it is pins 11 and 12 and that they are securely tightened down. Now again, I will want to uh, tie up some of these wires here so they are not exposed and loose like that, but uh, I just want to see if this works at this point. So now I can go ahead and make the final connection at the inverter here. All right, so now I'm over here on the Batrium software. I'm going to click on Menu and go to Control Logic. So I want to use the Discharging tab to control this inverter. Click Edit. And currently it's on Manual On, so I'm going to change it to Auto. I want my cell low cutout to be 2.9. So that means it will turn off the inverter if it hits 2.9 volts. Turn that one on. And for the cell low uh, resume here, we're going to turn that one on as well and change that to about, I guess, 3.4 is a fair voltage. That way it's not bouncing back and forth a bit. Uh, limit power low Celsius. I'll leave that on. And negative 5 Celsius is fine because these batteries can discharge a little bit below freezing, but it should never really go below freezing in here. High Celsius, I want this inverter to shut off. If it reaches, I guess 50 is fine as well. I'm not going to worry about ambient temperature right now because I have a rather unusual reading on my ambient sensor. Um, I don't want to worry about shunt voltages. Delay transition stop 5 seconds, restart 20 seconds, those are fair values. And for the shunt low cutoff and resume, I'm going to leave these uh, just turned off for now. Same with state of charge. Um, I don't want to worry about this. I just mostly want to focus on the individual cell level voltages and shutting it down based on those. I'll click save and now's when I have to figure out what my pin is because I have no idea. Okay and it says change is saved. So now we can go back to menu and click on hardware. So I'm going to click the expansion tab, click edit. Now make sure I have the Watchmon 5 plus expansion board selected since those are the two pieces of hardware I'm using. And I connected this inverter to relay one and I'm going to select discharging on since that is the state I just configured. And as soon as I click save, I should see this status light up and the inverter turn on. We'll see how this works here. All right, and I heard the relay click almost immediately after clicking uh, save. And you can see the inverter has started up successfully. So now the idea is the BMS will control this inverter when it turns on and when it turns off. And then on winter days when I need to shut it down manually, I can go from control logic, discharging, Optimally, I want to also configure a Wi-Fi switch so that I can access this, you know, through the Wi-Fi to shut this inverter off without having to come into the Batrium software, but that will be a separate video at this point. All right, so we've now got our Ames inverter controlled by our Batrium BMS. And again, this will work with any BMS. It doesn't need to be a Batrium. All it's doing is connecting two pins together on this LCD remote RJ45 port. So if you found this interesting, please don't forget to hit that like button down below. Any questions or comments, you can leave those as well. And thank you very much for watching.